Welcome to the Daily Wager Studios here on the Las Vegas Strip. I'm Doug Kazarian alongside Tyler Fulgham. We are officially 100 days from opening night of the NFL season. Of course, the defending chance will be hosting the Dallas Cowboys. Six and a half is your point spread. Dak Prescott coming off ankle injury. And obviously Tom Brady at the helm for the Buccaneers. For more, let's bring in Anita Marks. Anita, you have a play in this opening night game. I do. How can the Bucks lose opening night underneath the fireworks and the celebration? On top of that, they are running it back, and they've gotten better. They add Giovanni Bernard in that backfield, and I think a lot of us forgot O.J. Howard is part of that tight end core, and he's coming in healthy. On top of that, for the Dallas Cowboys, Doug, you mentioned it. You know, Dak Prescott coming off a horrific ankle injury. Will he be 100%? Regular season game one, I don't know. And Dan Quinn, new defensive coordinator, I think it's going to take a minute for that defense to gel. And I've got some big questions with that Dallas Cowboys secondary. So I, I, I like this Bucks team minus six and a half on opening night. I jump on it right now. Yeah, I'm right there with you as long as it's under seven because all the things that Anita touched on, they're running it back. First time ever, Super Bowl champ is bringing back all 11 starters on both offense and defense. And as great as Dak Prescott was, and he was, mm -hmm. the defense was putrid. All five games he played in last year, they finished 0-5 against the spread. So, yes, tons of weapons on offense, and they certainly do. But the defense can't stop a nosebleed. Bucks will be kind of in midseason form, having so much familiarity with all the starters coming back. So I expect them to start off right where they left off. I'm on the other side. I, I uh, humbly disagree with okay. you and Anita there. I'll Good. put the six and a half points in my pocket with Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. I think they're going to be a little hungrier. We remember the Tampa Bay Bucks last year, and this has been Tom Brady's kind of MO throughout his career. He wants to be playing his best football in December and January, and we saw that with the Bucks a season ago. So I don't expect the best version of the 2021 Bucks to be there on opening night kickoff that Thursday in the National Football League. Meanwhile, the Cowboys have a lot to prove, so I think they'll come into this game hungry. Dak, that defense with Dan Quinn wants to prove that they are not as putrid as they were yeah. a season ago, which is absolutely true. I also think the total here is a little bit too low. With that Cowboys offense and the Buccaneers, what they have, I think this could turn into a shootout. Yeah, I mean, the issues for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl was their offensive line. Yeah, right. It wasn't so much the rest of the defense, right. but should be fun, and we're already disagreeing on opening <laughs> night. Hey, speaking of the Bucs, they're your second favorite to win it all, plus 650. There's also some props out there. Will they run the table 50-1 to to go 17-0? No Mercury Morris champagne that way. Uh, Chiefs are more likely, according to the odds, 40-1. to And we have some 0-17 yes. possibilities as well. Let's bring it back, Anita. Any of those props interest you, Anita? How can you not love the Kansas City Chiefs, especially after what we heard Patrick Mahomes say? He's in Hawaii right now hosting his golf tournament. He spoke to Bleacher Report. This is what he had to say. The only record I have my eyes on setting right now to break is going to be this year is going 20-0. and 0. Okay, 40-1? to 1? I'll put a dollar on it. 40-1, to 1, why not? Listen, they improve the offensive line. They make the deal, the trade with the Ravens. They bring in Orlando Brown Jr. They draft Creed Humphrey. That offensive line gets better. We know what they can do on offense. Andy Reid, one of the best coaches in the NFL. Get this, you know, they won 25 of their previous 27 games before they lost in the Super Bowl. The only, when you look at the schedule, let's take a look at the schedule real quick. The first five weeks, there's three games on that schedule that scare me. The Browns week one, but they're holding Kansas City at the Baltimore Ravens. And then, boy, October 10th against the Bills. Doug, you know I love this Bills team. Those are the three games uh, in their first five games of the season that I want to keep an eye on. But 40 to 1, why not? I'll throw some coin on that. Yeah, they do have some tough games. You just alluded to just three in the first five. That's all. Uh, by the way, Mahomes assuming that there won't be another 17-0 team in the AFC. He's going to get the bye, the one bye. Just a, <laughs> a safe assumption, I would imagine. Uh, what stands out to you among those props? I'd rather go to the other side, the anonymous record of going 0-17. You can't go 0-20 because you won't make the postseason. But I'm much more confident in the ineptitude of the Houston Texans and the Detroit Lions. Anything can happen with an injury to the Bucs or to the, to the Kansas City Chiefs. But injuries will only help you trying to go 0-17 for teams that are already bad. Doug, the Houston Texans are at home week one, and a team that finished 1-15 a season ago is coming into their house in week one as a favorite on the road. That's how bad this With Texas a rookie team. quarterback with and rookie, rookie coach. Exactly. I don't think Deshaun Watson is going to take a snap for the Texans this year. If he does, that changes things. But I think they could very well have a very Detroit Lions circa 2008 roster. And the Lions themselves probably won't be favored in very many games. I know they have Jared Goff and Pene Sewell, but – 
There's not a lot of weapons on either side of the ball to help them score points. So I'd much rather dabble on 0-17 for the Texans and the Lions than 17-0 for the good teams. I would too, and given that we don't know Watson's status and the fact that the Jaguars are in the Houston Texans division, you get two games yep. against them. I'm going to focus directly on the Lions because I think there's real potential here. Matthew Stafford covered up so many mistakes. Remember those times where Stafford was hurt, how bad yeah. these teams were oh, yeah. pummeled on Thanksgiving <laughs> or other times. I just don't think there's much there, and the schedule is really tough. I mean, just look at all those teams. All of them are actually, like, thinking playoffs, except for maybe the Bengals just because their division's so tough and the Eagles. But outside of that, there's a lot of – Teams aspiring for the playoffs. The Broncos are pretty weak, but they got to go at Denver. Right. So that's a tough place right. to play, and obviously the defense will be. So with Jared Goff, who I think was just helped propped up by McVay and, uh, and the great defense, uh, he's going to get exposed a lot. I think there's legit opportunity here to go 0-17 with a new coach as well, and who knows with what he brings. Uh, there's just a, It's a rebuilding situation for sure. They got matched up with the AFC North and the NFC West, probably the two deepest and best divisions <laughs> in the National Football League, and they have a really bad roster. So 0-17 very much in the eyesight of Lions. Yeah, fans. I mean, if you had to pick, I would go Lions more than I would go okay. Texas, just for those reasons I mentioned. All right, a lot of fun <laughs> stuff, and again, 100 days away from opening night. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.